Hey Yardy friends! So in our past few tutorials we've really been focusing on drawing animals. We started with just kind of exploring the different forms that animals take and then in our last video we actually developed custom stick figures to help us understand the basic skeletal structure of various animals and to work on posing so these can be used as posing mannequins. Today I want to take that another step further. We're going to use these posing mannequins along with volumetric drawing, which we've covered in other videos, to kind of figure out how to draw several different animals. So I have printouts of a bear, I have a horse, I have a dog, and I have a cat. So we're going to be doing four animals today. Uh, apparently I have two dogs and no cats, so I need to remedy that before we proceed any further. Um, so normally what I would do is I would just sketch it from scratch in my sketchbook, but I thought it would be easier for demonstration purposes and more beneficial for my students in my drawing classes if we created overlays like we have here. So let's go ahead and get cracking. We're going to start with the cat, so I'm going to print that and check back in with you guys. So in our last tutorial when we were working on our pose mannequins for the cats, we did develop one using volumetric drawing. And we really used a lot of spherical egg shapes, conical shapes, and cylindrical shapes when developing cats. And I have a feeling that's going to be true for most of the mammals that we're gonna be drawing today because they tend to have very similar builds with some slight differences. So this is going to be a fun tutorial and I look forward to sharing it with you guys. So for today's demonstration, I'm going to be using a red and a blue layout pencil. I'm also going to be using some tracing paper. If you guys are doing this digitally at home, and I do recommend you do this at home, I would recommend you open in whatever drawing program you prefer to use, reduce the opacity, add another layer, and then draw over that in a contrasting color. But it's actually very easy for me to work this way, so this is going to be my preferred work method. And I am recording this tutorial to help me prepare for the third drawing class with my 10 and 11 year olds. And we're focusing on drawing animals, so recording these demonstrations kind of helps me prepare helps me get my thoughts in place, and it also helps me create the hands-on demos that we're going to be using in class. So if you enjoy the work that I do, one of the ways you can help me to continue to do it is by joining me over on Patreon at patreon.com slash natosuit. Another way you can help me continue to do it is to tell your friends or anyone else you think might be interested in these kind of tutorials and to share them over on your Tumblr, your Facebook, your Pinterest, anywhere you share content that you like. And that's going to help spread the word and help people find more great stuff. Speaking of great stuff, if you guys are looking for more drawing tutorials, I have a really great playlist, favorite drawing tutorials. That's going to cover most of your drawing needs. We have everything from drawing people to drawing houses to drawing perspective and even drawing comics. So you guys will find links to everything I mentioned in this video down in the description below. So in our last video, we did several different views of the cats kind of reclining, as well as we went over the skeleton from a few different views to get a really good idea of how cats are built. So I have my references right here and I'm going to keep relying on these as I practice drawing cats as I become more confident in drawing cats. So I'll have that off to the side and the first thing I want to do is I want to start with this sort of egg or conical shape that is the cat's rib cage and like we talked about in our animal stick figures video most mammals share very similar structures. So once you kind of have an understanding of how a few mammals are put together, you can figure out most. Dolphins are kind of the big exception. So we are beginning with our skeletal form. We have our rib cage, we have our neck, 
And it's actually much easier to study and to learn and to kind of see how these shapes come together when we have an overlay like this. Because all we're really doing is we're kind of translating the basic shapes onto an existing form. And we have our digigrade legs, which means the elbows bend inward rather than outward like human knees. And then we're going to draw little mittens for paws in this instance. So over here we have the pelvic bone, we have our backbone, and cats have fairly flexible backbones so it may not be as rigid as that. And then we have our digigrade back legs. And we have his little tummy and his other leg is kind of kipped behind here and then coming through. So kind of drawing through the skeleton, figuring out where everything is placed is also very helpful. And then we have our long tail. So on top of this, I'm going to place another overlay. And we're going to draw over it in volumetric construction to kind of figure out the 3D volumetric forms of our cat. And in our last video, we did several, several examples of cats in different poses, but today we're only going to do four animals and we're only going to do one pose for each animal. Now, in our last tutorial, I did talk about how repetition, drawing things over and over and over again, maybe in slight, slightly different poses or very different poses, how that sort of repetition is going to make you a stronger artist. It's going to give you a better understanding of what you're actually drawing. So, we have our rib cage, we have our pelvis. So, cats have kind of this, many cats, not all cats, skinny starving cats don't, but they have kind of little fat tum here and then we have so this would be a sphere an egg shaped sphere but a spherical shape we have the rib cage which is a sphere we have a cone no I'm sorry a cylinder for the neck then we have this half cone shape and then behind that is kind of an egg shape for the rest of the skull. Then for the ears, we have two triangular period pyramids. And then we have the little triangular nose here. The mouth here at the top of the little indention on the cone, I'm placing the third eye, which allows us to place the cat's actual eyes. Then we have kind of a conical shape here because the forearm, the top part of the cat's leg is wider where it connects to the body and then it narrows as it enters that joint. Same thing on the other leg. Then we have a cylinder here for the lower part of the limb and the cylinder these cylinders have actually so we have the leg goes this way and then it comes forward so that changes the perspective that we draw our volumetric shapes in and then we have the paws and we can go back and we can see that the cat's legs are a little bit closer than what I drew them I really can't actually see that well through the paper you guys have a better view than I do but that's actually kind of good because it kind of keeps me honest and then for the back leg we have a cylinder and then the soft little paw and then we have the same sort of conical shape because the top part of the leg where it meets the body of the cat is wider than where it meets the lower leg and then 
the stomach kind of comes down and covers this other leg, but we know it's cylindrical, and then we have the little foot, and then the tail is, if we were to extend the tail all the way out, it would come to a point, so it's like a really long extruded cone, but for the purposes of today's demonstration, we can draw it as a cylinder. And then we have just kind of the back haunch there as well. So there we have kind of a more volumetrically rendered cat. Let's move on to something we haven't drawn a million times. We're gonna move on to everybody's other favorite pet, the Puppo. And I do have a skeleton reference for dogs. So I'm gonna grab my skeleton reference and I'm gonna go ahead and put a tracing, piece of tracing paper down on the pup. All right, so I have my wire frame, my skeletal view of the dog here. And we have our puppy who already has a piece of tracing paper down on him. So I'm going to start again with the rib cage in this pup actually harder to see than the cat maybe. Fortunately I have reference up on my computer screen so I can just kind of glance over there to see what I'm doing. And then we have our spine and then we have our oh okay that's right so dog pelvises are a little bit different than cat ones so we actually have it going out like this and then like this, and then the tail comes out like this. Now, how are the front legs connected? So we're gonna go back to our reference, and we're gonna try to see, it looks like his shoulder blades, sketch that in so I can see his shoulder blades are actually closer to the front than the cats are. The cats are more towards the top. And then it looks like his sternum starts right underneath the shoulder blades. And then we have those digigrade legs where the leg bends backward. And I'm just going to draw little kind of mittens to show the dog's feet. And then he doesn't have as long a neck. Oh, okay, so the neck actually seems to come from here. And then we have a sphere for the bulk of his skull. And then he has this long muzzle, so this is gonna give me kind of a chance to explore. So this is like a half cone in shape. And it does taper, but it doesn't come to a point, at least in this dog. I know different breeds of dogs have different characteristics. And then, so really we would see the booty of the dog here. So his, he's kind of got his back to us a little bit. And then we have his paws there. So we have here kind of our basic skeletal sketch of our puppy. Then I put another piece of tracing paper on and we're going to work through this animal volumetrically. All right, now it's time to think in 3D. So it's really, really hard to see. But it looks like this little guy has kind of a jelly bean body. And in some of my human figure drawing but to, uh, classes we talk about flower sack bodies and jelly bean bodies and in those classes I say generally animals especially baby animals like kittens and puppies have these kind of jelly bean like bodies that's what I mean with the rib cage up here and then the pelvic area we used to call it the pelvic box but it's more like a cup back there. Then we have 
his neck, which is a cylinder like this. Then we have the sphere for his head. And so it's kind of like a long, it's almost like a, a pyramid because it's kind of a longer sort of conical shape and it takes up the lower half of his face and that would be the muzzle and this little cutie and our reference image has kind of a flat bottom to his muzzle so it's really very triangular shape and then we would sketch in an eye in the middle to help us place his real eyes and then we would give him kind of a little not a little larger than a cat, but a triangular nose. And then he has kind of this sweet, dopey po puppy grin. And then he has, so his ears are kind of offset on the top of the head. If we wanted to break this down even more, he has kind of like a little bit of a forehead. So his face contours like that and then over on this side again and he's got these little triangular ears that have folded over then we want to figure out where his collarbone would be his little sternum so right here because that's going to allow us to so his limbs are not really like cylindrical they're more like like cutlets like long and then as they enter his lower legs they do get a little bit rounder and since he's a puppy everything's kind of rounder and softer he's a, a baby dog in fact I drew his n neck way too long his head should be closer yeah and I drew his head too small like way too small so normally what I would do is I would pop a little piece of tracing paper on top of that to make my corrections so, might as well model that behavior now. And that's really just more of a note to myself than to anybody else. I know some people actually hate making mistakes in their sketchbook, which I think is a shame because that's what sketchbooks are for. To learn and to make mistakes and you can't ever grow if you don't make mistakes. But I definitely can understand not wanting to leave a mistake uncorrected. So I'll go ahead and show you guys what I do in my sketchbook when it really, really bothers me and I don't necessarily want to redraw the whole thing. Because usually I tell you guys, especially at this stage, if we make a mistake, to just redraw the whole thing. But let's say you have all the rest of the puppy drawn and it looks really good and you just really don't want to have to toss all that. So we're putting down a little bit of tracing paper. We're going to redraw that sphere for his head much larger this time. It's a lot about scale. And eyes on most animals are at the midway point on this sphere. And then his muzzle would be halfway on this hemisphere. So part of the point of this is noticing where we've made our mistakes. Our neck is still too long, but we're going to focus on this much larger redrawn head. Noticing where you make your mistakes and trying to address them in your second drawing. So it's all about learning how to do things. So we didn't spend any time actually erasing. We spent that time because we can still reference what we did wrong but now we have our corrected version on top of it and that can be really beneficial for learning because it creates 
kind of like a history that you can flip back through and you can see your mistakes and you can remember to correct those in the future. It doesn't just disappear. And that's probably still too small. And see, when I finish redrawing his head, I'm going to tape down here at the bottom. So yeah, that's too small. Of course, if you were doing it digitally, you could scale up his head, but part of the benefit of redrawing these things is to learn and to learn from our mistakes and to see what we're doing wrong and to try to remedy that. So I'm going to go ahead, since we have a bit of a time constraint, I'm going to go ahead and move forward. So the back legs actually start kind of high up into the body. So his stomach hangs down. And then we've got our cylinders for the legs and then the backs of his feet are actually arched up a little bit so these are like little pyramids actually the same is true for here and that leg is back a bit more than I drew it oh his head's gonna bother me because it's like now all I can see is how small it is I'll redraw that off camera I care but I don't want to take up y'all's time with doing like six redraws while I figure something out and then this back leg here. And I'm actually, because I can't even see him. I guess you guys can't see him anymore either. I'm referencing my computer. Oh, so I goofed. So this should come up and that should come back and this should come up and that should come back. Because this is his heel, like the heel of his foot. And then we have the tail and the tail is more like it's curved at the top and then kind of flattened at the bottom. It's not perfectly round. All right, so that is our dog off camera. I'm going to redraw his head, but we're going to move forward now with our bear. And I do have their skeletal reference as well, so I'll grab that. So here is our bare skeletal reference. Here is our printout. I'm going to put a piece of tracing paper on top of him, and we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're starting with our skeletal view. This one's interesting because we can really see, and I can see it here in the actual photo we can see the shoulder blades the scapula of the bear and then i also can kind of see where that connects so we're gonna start with our rib cage which is actually i did this wrong it would be narrower up here with a actually a very small neck connection uh, comes in down here so it's more like that and then like dogs they have kind of this bone here and then their pelvis and they have legs kind of like humans where the bones come forward at least on the back legs on the front leg and then they have this tiny little tailbone which I don't think we're gonna be able to see on this one and from my sketch he has kind of two cube shapes probably flares out a bit more like this to accommodate the bulk of his face then we have the shoulder blade you can tell I didn't practice this animal as much as I did the cat because there's a lot more kind of figuring things out and stumbling through things than there was with the cat but that's okay practice makes perfect the more I would draw bears the better I would get at drawing bears and then they have kind of long 
but not as arched feet. Okay, so we have our small skeletal mannequin of a bear. I'm going to put another piece of tracing paper on top of it, and we're going to do our 3D volumetric form. Okay, so this one's a hard one to see. I'm really leaning heavily on my computer reference. So we have the egg shape here, and then we have kind of a larger egg shape there. And we can see his scapula coming out from behind. He's kind of leaning forward too. So I want to kind of keep that motion in mind. So his legs, actually, we can see them through the fur pretty high up and his the bulk of his body covers most of like the recognizable joints so bears would be one of those animals that might be very easy to gesture draw from reference and very difficult to draw especially repeatedly if you were doing a character design okay so the head itself And then the muzzle is a lot like a dog's in that it's kind of conical, but it's down here, it's more oblong. And then his eyes are actually pretty small compared to like the size of his face. And then he has these little ears at the top there. And we can see his neck is like a really wide cylinder. And then, so it looks like he's all in the picture. It looks like he's almost sitting. His tail looks like it's hidden by his fat. And then we can barely see, <laughs> barely, we can barely see his other leg because this leg kind of occludes it. And where this hump is, I would bet I'm wrong about where I've put the pelvis. I bet it's actually higher up, and I bet this is where the backbone meets the pelvis. Okay, so we have our bear finished. That leaves us with one more, our horse. So for our horse, I have a couple of different references. We have a very static pose. And then we also have a really nice one of the horse rearing. Oh, look, it almost matches. I think I'm gonna rely more heavily on this view. It's larger, I can see more of what's going on. And it more closely mimics the action that we have here. So with any drawing situation, as I mentioned earlier, practice makes perfect. The more you practice drawing, the better you're going to get. The more you practice drawing specific animals, the more you spend time understanding their movements and practicing, the better you're going to be. So I don't expect from doing a scant handfuls of drawings of these animals, of dogs, of bears, of horses, that I'm going to suddenly be a master. And I'm not trying to pretend like I'm one when I'm showing you guys this. I just want to show you guys a very systematic, very reproducible way of understanding how animals are drawn, figuring out how to go about drawing any animal that you want to draw, and maybe even how to invent animals yourself. Because if you understand the basics, then it's going to be a lot easier to extrapolate and build from that. Now, if I really wanted to draw a particular animal well, let's say I wanted to go into dinosaur illustration, like for museums or for books, or I wanted to go into drawing horses, I would spend a lot of time studying the musculature and how the muscles hang on the bones. I wouldn't just rely on this kind of stick figure and then volumetric drawing to understand the animal. 
So with the horse, we have kind of this barrel shaped rib cage. And kind of curves in like that. And then we have this long curved neck. And where's the scapula on this? It's up here. So it looks like the collarbone for the animals up there, and then the scapula would be there. And where it looks like the four legs of this horse start way up here. So we can't necessarily see them because some of that is underneath the animal's skin. I would also spend more time kind of doing these muscular studies, musculature, not muscular, skeletal studies, apologies, a little bit off my game today. And I would just spend a lot of time drawing things over and over and over again until I have a really solid understanding of what's going on. So I kind of feel like I'm, for brevity's sake, I'm glossing over it and there's the tailbone back there and that makes sense because that's where it would connect to the tail of the horse. Um, for brevity's sake, I feel like I'm kind of skipping over and horses have kind of pyramidal heads, interesting, that are kind of blocked off at the front. But hopefully this gives you guys kind of the gist so that you feel empowered to do this on your own. Okay, so we're going to add another sheet of tracing paper and finish off our horse volumetrically. Okay, so we have kind of this, at least in this pose, we have kind of this long jelly bean body so we know the rib cage is up here and it goes down to here and that's kind of where this break is and then this is the back half of the animal and we also know that scapula are up here which probably accounts for some of this and then this is the collarbone and then we really can't see actually now that I look at now that I look at a good view of the animal actually it looks like the collarbone is way down here so that's something so you look at this one here and it looks like it's like right up here right but you look here, and I'll make sure I include photos of all the animals we reference because I know we can't really see what's going on here but it looks like it comes down like this is where the breastbone is and then this is where so this is what I mean by like doing a lot of study doing a lot of drawing from reference that way you can better understand what's going on and I think it's a worthwhile field of study I think it's worth putting the time in to do it so you can understand it I kind of regret that I haven't dedicated as much time interesting so this is like the knee right but it it's really wide and flat and then this is like a cylinder and then it zigs back over here because this would be the heel on the animal right and then the the I almost said the shoe <laughs> the hoof would be here and then we can't even see in this view we can't even see the other leg which means it's pretty much perfectly aligned with the camera and our viewpoint to be hidden behind that other leg 
And then, so this actually kind of goes up a little. And it's also good to like, when we create reference materials and either create additional resources, so we know the tail's actually partially in the hair of the tail, which explains why they can swish their tails around. I'm just gonna draw it as a single unit. And then sew the neck on a horse is wider at the top and then comes to a V. And it does that throughout. So I don't really know what to call that shape. It's not cylindrical, but. And then I drew this at more of an angle than what we actually see. So I'm gonna correct that even though what we have underneath is good information to know. And then the mouth kind of comes down a little bit. It's more of a horse in profile. And y'all are gonna laugh. This is the best horse I've ever drawn. I'm really not a horse person. They're okay. I grew up riding them. Um, my dad had a deal with someone he was renting property to who kept horses that part of it was that they would give me riding lessons. Not fancy, it was like farm horses. So I like horses okay, but I wasn't one of those girls. I think because I grew up with access to horses and they were seen as work animals, it wasn't like I had like my little pony dreams of riding off into the sunset on a horse. My uh, dream animal as a child was a cat. I really wanted a cat. So um, I like horses okay, I like most animals, but I don't, I haven't like drawn a million horses, right? Like I don't have a lot of experience with drawing horses. So this is the best horse I've ever drawn, woo! All right, so off camera, I'm gonna fix that puppy's face and I'll check in with you guys.
Wow, dang y'all. I did not think I was gonna fight with drawing this puppy as much as I did. I had a lot of, I really struggled with it. I had a lot of problems drawing this puppy. You guys can tell I don't draw dogs. And that's not because I don't just, I don't like dogs. I love dogs. It's just that they come in so many different shapes and sizes that when I'm drawing a dog, I'm usually drawing very specific dogs. And uh, it just, it is what it is. But you, I also wanted to show you guys like, how important it is to stick with something until you get it right. To do it over and over and over again until you get it right. That's one of the best ways to learn. And you guys just saw, like, it became a Frankenstein's, Frankenstein's monster of me just keeping <laughs> stuff on. I definitely think, you can see my first iteration, I definitely think we made progress. I definitely think some areas really improved, some areas still need some finessing but it's really nice to see the growth and that's why i recommend you keep your bad drawings you draw over them you turn the next page you redraw it you put post-it notes on it whatever don't just erase it keep your bad drawings because that's a really good way to keep track of your learning and your progress so today we drew four different animals we drew a dog we drew a cat who i think turned out to be my favorite the cat is the best in my opinion we drew a bear and I think I need to practice drawing bears. I think I need to just practice drawing animals in general, but that's okay. We drew a horse. So we did four different animals today. We started with the base skeleton mannequin that we developed in our last tutorial and we use volumetric perspective to better understand the forms for each individual animal. I would recommend if you want to get good at drawing animals in general, you just draw a lot of animals over and over and over and over again. You just put the mileage on your pencil and you get the practice in and it's going to become easier and you're going to be become better at it. Even here, you can see I did show improvement. Now with cats, I draw cats pretty frequently. So, and we've already put a lot of mileage into drawing cats. So I feel like the cat definitely came the easiest. I was surprised how much I struggled with the dog, but that just shows me that I still need to put time in and I still need to practice in order to become as proficient as I would like to be. So today we did a lot of drawing. If you guys were drawing along with me, I wanna say thank you. And I wanna let you guys know how proud I am for the effort that you've been putting in learning how to draw, trying to develop a new skill. Whether you are a young person who's augmenting your drawing classes from school or homeschool, or you're an older person who never really got the background in art that you would have liked, I hope I have tutorials here to help you guys gain confidence and polish your skills before you guys move on to the next stage of your artistic journey. I'm always cheering for you guys. I have loads more free art and drawing tutorials over on my blog at natosoup.blogspot.com. And if you guys enjoy my art and you'd like to check out what I'm working on, you guys can follow me on Instagram at instagram.com slash natosoup. If you guys are looking for more art and drawing tutorials, you guys can check out my favorite drawing tutorials in the playlist linked in the description below. And I hope I have inspired you guys lit a passion, lit a fire under some of your butts to get you guys drawing. You don't have to be the best artist in the world to enjoy drawing. And you don't have to have a lot of natural talent to become good at drawing. You do need a lot of persistence and you do need to be willing to put a lot of time into it. But it's something I genuinely feel most people are able to accomplish. And it's fun to watch you guys grow. So if you guys are looking to hone your skills and grow in a warm and welcoming environment, I have a Discord server, The Paint Box, that I'll link down in the description if you guys are interested in sharing your art, getting feedback, and communicating with other artists. It is a community, and that means we communicate, and it means we don't just take from one another, we also give. So that's definitely an expectation that I have if you guys join that community, that you're going to provide feedback and encouragement to other artists as well. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you guys again really soon. Have a wonderful day guys. Bye!